Hello, and welcome to CYBR in 10. My name is Nick Dulovitz. I'm the Director of Technical Alliances at CyberArk. CYBR in 10 is a video series consisting of 10 to 15 minute installments. Each video covers a single topic with the common theme being education around CyberArk specifically and privileged best practices generally. This session will be focused on privileged access for databases. Let's say you're about to walk into a meeting. You know your client wants to talk about securing their databases, but right now you're not sure what a database is. At the end of this short video, you'll be able to cover the basics of database privilege access. The rest is up to you. First off, let's define what a database is. It's a systematic collection of data. There are different formats that a database can use to store that data, but for our conversation today, we don't really care how the data is laid out inside of the database. What we're focusing on today is how that data is accessed and how we can ensure it's being accessed securely. So we've established that a database is a systematic collection of data. Depending on the type of data being stored, we might not want just anyone accessing it. Database manufacturers know this, so they have built-in tools to support things like role-based access control to ensure that only the appropriate parties are able to access specific data. So, like in your Windows environment where you have, admi have administrator-level accounts, user-level accounts, and everything in between, most databases offer the same control structure. Da a database administrator, or DBA, is a person that manages a database. We want to ensure that when they authenticate to that database, they have only the level of access that their job function requires. For example, if they are only responsible for running periodic cleanup jobs on a particular database, that person probably should not be able to change who can access the database. I think that's pretty straightforward, uh, but it's not just people that access databases. In fact, most of the time, it's an application that will be accessing a database. That application still needs credentials to authenticate, and least privilege still dictates that the application should only be able to access the specific information for its operation. So how does CyberArk fit into all of this? Well, if you're familiar with CyberArk's hygiene guidelines, which were covered in my previous video, shameless plug if you haven't seen it, uh, then you probably already have some ideas around where CyberArk fits in. There are three main goals around securing privileged access when it comes to databases. So first, right, is to secure the built-in accounts. Second, restrict lateral movement. And then finally, lock down application access with CyberArk's application identity manager. Let's dig into each of these um, and get some more additional detail. All right, so first off, um, securing the built-in accounts. Um, this is actually pretty simple. Databases, just like every other device in your life, have built-in admin accounts. Let's make sure that these accounts are managed by CyberArk. This means they're vaulted, their passwords are being rotated on a regular basis as defined by policy, and we're auditing the use of them. This also guarantees a unique password value is set for every built-in account within your environment. So if an attacker does gain access or gain admin access to one database, they can't leverage that access to pivot to other databases or any other type of system for that matter. Step two, um, we need to start looking at isolation options. Okay, so if you're familiar with CyberArk's Privileged Session, uh, Privilege Session Manager, uh, or PSM, which we will be covering in a future video, so keep your eyes out for that, uh, you'll know this is a great option to isolate the privilege credential from the endpoint. What does that mean exactly? Well, it means that the CyberArk solution installed in your environment is able to keep the privilege credential from being exposed at the workstation layer, rendering it impossible for an attacker sitting at the workstation layer to compromise that credential and then, more importantly, compromise the database. Additionally, via PSM, CyberArk is able to provide a full video audit of every activity executed interactively on the target system, which in the context of this session would be our database. And then finally, um, securing application access. This is a biggie and can occasionally be overlooked. Uh, I mentioned above that generally applications access databases far more often than people. So how do they do it? Well, just like people, they need a credential, usually a username and password. And unlike people who are able to remember all of their passwords without any problem and they would never put them on a sticky note, an application needs a secure place to store that credential so it can be used whenever it needs it. 
this normally means one of two things. The credential is hard-coded and uh, into the application, and therefore changing the password is very difficult and would require at least a code change, but potentially a recompile of the application as well. Um, the other thing that we'll often see is a credential stored in a configuration file that the application is referencing. Uh, this is not a very secure option, as someone with, a fi with file system access could easily compromise that credential. So, how does Cyborg address this? Well, we do it through our secure API to the vault that we call Application Identity Manager, or AIM, A-I-M for short. So, uh, AIM allows us to store that credential in CyberArk's digital vault and then allow authorized applications to securely access the credential dynamically. This solves the issue with the two uh, methods we previously, we previously mentioned. Uh, now we're able to rotate that password as often as we'd like without affecting uh, app application uptime and we don't have to rely on storing credentials in clear text on a file system. So in conclusion. What we want to do is first secure the built-in accounts by vaulting, managing, rotating, and auditing the usage of those accounts. Secondly, we want to restrict lateral movement, leveraging CyberArk Privilege Session Manager to isolate the privilege credential from the workstation layer and record um, from a full video perspective all the activities that happen within a privilege session. Uh, and then finally, lock down application access with CyberArk's Application Identity Manager thereby removing hard-coded credentials uh, and removing credentials that are embedded within a configuration or a text file. Uh, so there you have it, um, the simple steps to recording, uh, to, to locking down database privilege access. Hopefully this video has been uh, enlightening and we look forward to seeing you for future videos.